Good day. Now we're going to discuss business process outsourcing, module two, fundamentals of outsourcing. So for the objective of this module, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to name the two types of outsourcing, enumerate the different, different, out, different outsourcing strategies, state the common types of activities, tasks, and or processes that get outsourced. And of course, identify what are the key technologies and trend in outsourcing. So putting things into context, the first bullet here, as you can see on your screen is no man is an island. The next is everything is connected and the nature of business is. So you, this cliche, no man is an island, you have heard it maybe a decade ago or it's a common term, but you might ask, why is it here? In the concept of business process outsourcing, no man is an island because no business nor individual can live on his or her own. No business can stand alone on its own. Why? Because we need to get resources and outsource some processes to other entities or other business in order to operate the business as a whole. As an individ individual, we cannot live al alone. We need to outsource. Imagine if you have to plant your own food, process your own food, or plant cotton, process the cotton, and then make it as your clothes. It's tiring, right? That's why in this world, everything is connected. One way or another, we are interdependent with other people, with other business, like your education. You, your parents are not the one, um, yes, they are sending you to school, but they are not the one giving you the knowledge or the expertise you want to gain from the de degrees you are taking, right? I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that the concept of no man is an island in relation to business process outsourcing or even as an individual. At the same time, everything is connected because we are not living in a world where we are so, so dependent on ourselves, but rather we are interdependent and interconnected with other businesses and entities and other human beings in this planet. And of course, if you are a finance major or if you are a human resource major, you already know what the nature of business is. The nature of business is, and the goal of every business is to increase the shareholders' wealth. But in doing that, they have to provide good customer service produce products and services that satisfies customers, okay? Because increasing the wealth and having profit is just a consequence of doing good business. So anyone who is not doing good business will not have profit. That's, I believe, if you do good business, one way or another, um, the consequence is do, um, having great profit or, and of course, increase the shareholders' wealth if you are a corporation. So that's putting things into context. That is where the relationship of our discussion goes. So the two types of outsourcing, there are two types, third party and shared service center. Guys, remember, it's only in outsourcing that third party is a positive connotation, not in a relationship. <laughs> so third party, third party owned by a service provider a local entity or part of a global group provides services to clients of the service provider. So what is this? If I am um, Nike, are you familiar with the Nike athletic apparel, right? Nike is based in US. Some of its apparel are being made in either Vietnam and some are even made in China. So the service provider, the third party is China, okay? Why is it that China is the third party and not the second party? Because the third party, the 
is the service provi provider. The second party are, are the stake, um, the employees, the managers, and the likes in, within the organization. The first party, of course, are the owners of the business. So that is so easy to understand. Third party. And remember, only in business process outsourcing, sourcing where third parties have a positive connotation, not in any relationship, okay? Shared service center. So what is this? Wholly owned by the mother company, providing service entirely to affiliates and subsidiaries or more, rarely to clients of the mother company. I hope this is still true if you have friends um, working in, in any of the Jollibee Food Corporation. Jollibee Food Corporation has actually different affiliates and subsidiaries like Chow King, Greenwich, uh, Red Ribbon, Chooks to Go. They own those. That is part of Jollibee Food Corporation. Of course, Jollibee. So in their, one of their subsidiaries, the Chooks to Go, they have, they have this... Um, looking for business uh, potential investors who wants to uh, i'm just using the word hotel for chicks for the baby chicken <laughs> the chicks so they're looking for that so if you you need at least um before um we were invited to do this but we lack the we have the money unfortunately we don't have the 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 the, the lot to put up the building. We need at least 500 square meters to do this, at least. So what they're going to do is that they're, they're going to give you the chicks, um, probably thousands of them, and then you have to make sure that these chicks will grow in at least a month or less than a month as specified and they will harvest it. They will provide the chicks, the foods for the chicks. All you have to do is take care of the chicks. And after that, they will pay for your service in, in taking care of these chicks. They will now become chickens. And then when they harvest it, of course, they will provide this chicken, like the parts of the chicken, the whatever part, the thigh, the legs, or for Jollibee, for Jollibee, for for Chow King or for Greenwich, other parts of the body of the chicken that they serve as their fried chicken. And of course, for Mang, uh, Mang Inasal also, that the pet cho and the pa'a as we usually order. So technically, Chooks to Go, part of Chooks to Go, which is also part of the Jollibee Food Corporation, is providing service to the affiliates and subsidiaries of Jollibee Food Corporation. Um, in our dialect, unay ratanan. They they produce they produce the chicks, the chicken, and then they just distribute it to their affiliates. It, this is the best example I can give you, and hopefully there are other companies that do the same. It's just like um, you plant the banana. And then all your relatives are, are selling banana queue. So if you have a corporation, you are the one plant, part of the corporation, you are in charge of planting the banana and the others are in charge for selling. So you, it is called shared ser service center, wherein the company is wholly owned by the mother company. And then trivia. Why is it called mother company and sister company, not brother company or father company? You might wonder why it is called like that. Um, this is just a side story of the discussion, but it is a trivia. So that something you learn something from, or you will learn something new. Mother company because and sister company. Why is it called like that? It is. It is because it is only the female who can who is able to produce. They are only the ones who are able to get pregnant. So produce. That's why it's called mother company or sister company. You how you will, or maybe in the future if the society will change. But as of the moment, you will never really hear brother company. Or 
this is the brother company of blah 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 corporation no you will never hear that but you will always hear that this is a sister company of xyz cor corporations and the likes so these are the two types of outsourcing third party and shared ser service center so the next is strategies for outsourcing there are five strategies for outsourcing so we will um, discuss one by one first is multi-sourcing so the obvious benefit uh, or advantage of multi-sourcing is that the buyer or the client can leverage the best possible technical expertise support infrastructure in system or product support from the host of service providers that they engage through separate contracts one disadvantage of course that can arise in this mi minute possibility of incompatibilities of technology unintended to work together then again this is easily overcome with project planning testing training and quality assurance so multi-sourcing it's like when you are a a business in making pastries and breads and pastries for that matter and your and your only source is let's say yan yan our local local stores here in the city what if yan yan does not have the item you need and you only have contract with yan yan and the they don't have the item that you need. So what happened to your operations? One way or another, there will be a stoppage or it will hamper the operation of your business that it can cause disappointment from your customers, right? So multi-sourcing is good as long as they provide you with the quality you need and the technology you need. So Instead of just having yan yan, you probably go to, go to other stores, like probably Li Plaza or Wikis, probably that provide the goods that you need. So multi sourcing from the word multi means uh, many or a lot. So easy to remember. Next is crowdsourcing. This is really really um, rampant nowadays like when you post something in your wall on facebook like you put lf uh, lf looking for a boyfriend if you don't have one or girlfriend if you don't have one hey just kidding anyway if you want to look for information ideas um or content you solicit it from large group of people so like online communities rather than from traditional employees or suppliers so you want the ideas of several people who have experienced such or like you post in bid for me or among any other groups that you join in fb like if you have a if you are a motorcycle enthusiast to a specific brand of motorcycle you have page for that right and then if you have problems with your motorcycle you just go to your page and then lf your lf or looking for or asking questions obtaining sources from the crowd so instead of the traditional employees or suppliers, you look, um, you look sources from the crowd and then filter it. And then once you have filtered it or rank or you have probably a poll, um, you list all the probable sources and then you ask the ideas of the people about it. And then with that, you can get ideas on where you will source your your product probably or your service probably so that's crowdsourcing and you're actually a lot of us are doing this it's just that we don't know that it's crowdsourcing actually except for some so onshoring the next is onshoring so onshore outsourcing simply means that the vendor or service provider is based in the same country as the client company so advantages allows immediate response this is because they are in the same country local contractors can have the same market knowledge cultural language communication style and of course if there is a, an advantages there are also disadvantages so a risk of inadequate selected trained supervised staff high risk of attrition a very good example for this are the service provider of our local telecommunication company right and every time you every time or if you need 
if you uh, if you need them or if you have queries or complaints about the the loads your plan and among other queries you're asking about our local telecommunication company you call on their service provider right their call center so when you answer them it, they just outsource it on locally so some of the the service provider or the or the customer service representative are actually spec speaking our dialect, right? Because they have the market knowledge, culture, language, and of course, the communication style. If you are Bisaya, some of them are Bisaya. Some of them are Ilongo or the typical, um, they're using Filipino language so that they can communicate with everyone else in the country. So this is also the advantage of onshoring. But of course, high risk of attrition, maybe because of the graveyard shift or the high working hours and the like. So this is the risk about it. But it can be mitigated with proper motivational um, tools done by the organization. So next is near sharing. So the transfer of business to a nearby country, often sharing the same border. So the advantage is fee for the service variability rather than fixed compensation, significant labor cost arbitrage, and of course, uh, disadvantage, additional coordination costs because you, you are now in a different country, even if it is just sharing the, you're just sharing a borderline. Transferring price, uh, transfer pricing tax and margin requirement. Um, you might probably heard over the news or if you have read news article online or, or in television, if you watch news, there are a lot of, outsource activities in Mexico. And you might wonder why Mexico, because Mexico has lower cost of labor and that it is just they, it is just within the borderline between Mexico and US. That's why there are a lot of Mexican people doing labor for American people. And what else? Um, I think that's um, this, because it is very, very, it's very cheap in Mexico com compared to do labor in the US. So that is near showing. Remember, they share the same border. It's just like if you are from Cambodia or you are from Thailand, you're, you outsource your, some of your products and services with Vietnam because they just share the same border. Okay, that's near showing. Next is offshoring. Vendors and clients in different countries and often separated by not borders, sometimes by seas, not no more borders for this. Advantage allows company to focus on core activities, fast trump at reasonable cost, opportunity to expand into new areas cost effectively. That's why there are a lot of um, top two countries where call centers are being outsourced are India and the Philippines. There are years that the Philippines is number one, and there are years also India becomes number one. How that is for call center because um, we can we can be fluent in the English language and India is also competitive in that area. In terms of products, we also have here in the Philippines. Timex is actually in Cebu, outsourced in Cebu, and of course China is leading in the offshoring of produce. China. There's also Vietnam, India. Um, Thailand, of course, also, they also have it there. Not Malaysia also, there are a lot of businesses that are being outsourced in this country. And of course, the Philippines is also part of it because we have low cost of labor. That's offshoring. So next, so, and the, of course, there are these advantages of offshore data privacy, confidentiality issues, because you cannot deny the fact that you really have to tell your, your service provider that some data even if it is private and confidential because you want them to pro provide the best for your for your customers right and then lack of right business acumen because different countries have different um, business strategies and then if it does not or if it is not parallel with your country it can be uh, of greatest advantage for the business and of course cultural difference leading to delays and miscues um, part of this also is the time 
because what is morning in the other country will be probably nighttime in our country. But of course, this can be still cure with trainings and development. And of course, attrition, weak staff selection and training if, if they don't have a good human resource managers management strategies also, then probably there will be a high risk of um, attrition and then weak staff selection that causes them to quit the job. Or if there is poor training, then this can also cause um, customer dissatisfaction. Next is what to outsource. There are two types of what to outsource in the organization. Tasks that deliver final product. Sometimes it is the business who make the main product, but it will. Some of the outsource are the processes. Like some of the processes, and then essential um, non-core activities, support activities, process and function. Guys, don't forget you are not going to outsource core activities. Okay. What to, our, what to outsource is tasks and processes. And of course, non-core activities, the uh, support activities. So what not to outsource? Your design, product development, and some of your unique process. So what to outsource? Um, well-defined documented tasks, standard outputs. Like if your the output is chocolate, you're not going to tell them what are the ingredients, but you can do the output, right? The chocolate output. So example is IT development, programming, documentation, integration. These are, these are just examples. You can also outsource maintenance, help desk, network support, and the likes. Next is typical, these are the typically outsourced activities. IT outsourcing, support function, routine activities, seasonal requirements, part-time based activities, and other, these are also, this is an example of outsourcing of entire business process components. So the business, so the business process is human resource, financial, payroll, and accounting. So these are the example of companies that outsource the function. Rebook outsource its human resources too. These are the third party. Shell SSC, Deutsch Knowledge Services, Coca-Cola Butlers. The financials of Washington Mutual, Sally May, and Expedia outsource their financials to Aegis, DSM, and Manila LLC. And the Del Monte Philippines outsource its parent accounting to Manulife, DKS, BP. Oh, International Incorporated. So these are the business process activities. These are the companies and the third party where they outsource such activities. So these are just examples. There are actually a lot of companies or if some of you are working, you, you will understand that some of the activities where you are working are being, being actually outsourced. Your raw materials, those are being outsourced. You don't produce them. Sometimes you buy them from the public market or from the department stores, right? Next are the support functions and services that are being outsourced. In our school, our cafeterias are outsourced, our copy centers, our security, the blue guard people, and of course, the janitorial services. So tracking and shipping. Some of you are familiar with Lazada and, and Shopee, right? They outsource their tracking and shipping. That's why your parcel comes in either Intrigo, what else, GNP, LBC, Ninja Man, among others. And of course, building and maintenance. Some of it are being outsourced also where plumbing and the water piping and the likes are being outsourced because sometimes you don't have, this is not your expertise. So rather you go to other people who has this expertise. So these are some of the routine activities or activities that can be automated at the larger center. So small banks outsourcing check processing at a large bank, riding on ATM based on multi-bank network. Actually, um, I have this friend who is a who is working in a bank, and then and then he said that they prefer 
that their clients go to ATM, um, ATMs rather than fall in line inside the office because it will cost them more in terms of process when people fall in line inside the bank compared to people falling in line in the ATMs. That's what they said. So that's why people outsource because they want to lessen their cost. That's why we are provided with ATMs. ATMs are technically easier. Uh, five minutes, you're done. And then you can just withdraw anywhere as long as your ATM card is, is the new one. A, right? If your bank is this, you can just withdraw from another bank with a specific fee. But what is 18 pesos or 20 pesos compared to waiting in line inside the bank for one hour, right? That's a waste of time. So why not fall in line on the ATM rather than fall in line one hour, fall in line with the ATM for 10 minutes or fall in line in the bank, inside the bank for one hour. So outsource, they outsource. This is outsourcing, automated outsourcing. Small vendors using Amazon.com as data centers, marketing and payment processing platform. We don't have, um, Amazon is also present. At the, uh, we can also buy products in Amazon, but what is common in our country is Lazada and Shopee, I believe. And I think you would agree to that also. Banks using common or multi-bank core banking services of large technology providers. And of course, um, this time around, because of the, because of, um, not only because of pandemic, but to make transaction easier and payment of bills and the likes easier and convenient. Um, we have now online banking wherein you can pay your bills online or send money online. And we, you have as simple as Gcash. So that's easier. And these companies are also actually doing that to lessen the activities in their main office. And of course, for the convenience for us, convenience for us, actually, we really, we are onto convenience. So of course, other outsource activities, the seasonal requirement. So, uh, one day 50 employees need, next uh, needed, Christmas time, during Christmas time, there are a lot of new sales lady or sales representative being being hired by a department store or some BPO companies hire extra during, they call it ramp, during Valentine's Day or Mother's Day. And then all part-time based activities, automobile assembly, electronic assembly, packaging solutions, some of the handicrafts, these are little and these are part-time based activities or if you're making a house or building a house it is just a part-time activity because after building a house then you're done so that's outsourced because you if if you are the owner of the house you don't hire the the carpenter until that carpenter retires right because you have, the house is already built so why need for them anymore so that's part of it you just outsource them for a seasonal requirement or a part-time based activity. So these are the technologies that support outsourcing. This was way back and there are a lot of technology actually today that has been supporting the, the outsourcing business. So these are just part of it. HP Halo, Cisco, and the list go on, send the line. And of course, for our online class, we outsource technology like Google Classroom, Facebook, and Messenger, part of Facebook also. And of course, YouTube to help us in our online class. And other teachers are using other platforms as well. So I think that would be all. And prepare for activities. Next meeting. Thank you and have a good day.